All right, so it's large, and I'm standing here on the banks of the River Thames in front of the Tower Bridge. We're about to go inside because the Peturbiev Bivol press conference is going to get underway any second. This one's going to be one of the greatest fights of the year, possibly one of the greatest fights of all time, and I'm going to break it down to you soup to nuts. Stay tuned. October the 12th, live from Saudi Arabia, two undefeated titans put it all on the line as they stake their claim for the light heavyweight throne. Peturbiev versus Bivol. All right, so we know that every fighter has a powerful backstory, something that shapes them into the elite athletes that they are today. And even though Bavol and Baturbiev seem like they're worlds apart, each of their backstories are rooted in a powerful cultural legacy. Let's start with Baturbiev. Born in Dagestan, raised in the heart of Chechen culture, his people have a long history of resilience, shaped by conflict and a warrior spirit that defines their identity. All right, so growing up in Kasavirat, a region that was scarred by the Chechen Wars, Beterbiev was surrounded with violence since he was a little kid. So boxing was not just a sport, it became a mechanism for survival. And then his toughness, which is world-renowned, doesn't just come from his training, but it comes from his heritage, which is rooted in courage, loyalty, and a refusal to back down. You know, when I was a little kid, I have uh, many fights in the street. Okay. And uh, my, my older, older brothers decide to put this energy in some sport, you know, and I have less fights in the street. So on the other hand, Dmitry Buval's journey is shaped by his multicultural roots. He was born to a Moldovan father and a Korean mom, and that gave him a unique perspective on life and on fighting and an adaptability that would later set him apart from the rest of the boxing world. So from Chechen resilience, to multicultural strength. These two fighters are more than just athletes. They are living representations of their heritages. I wanna say that I born in uh, Kyrgyzstan. Mm -hmm. And at uh, that time when I born in Kyrgyzstan, the Kyrgyzstan was the part of USSR. And USSR was a multinationality country, multicultural uh, uh, country. Uh, in my grade in school, we had a lot of Kyrgyz people, Russians, Jewish, uh, even uh, Germany, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, a lot of uh, people from different nationalities. And even me, Korean, Moldovan, we had some Koreans also in our city. And I felt myself normal, just normal human being, just any other kids. And we were friendly with each other. We didn't uh, separate by the culture or by the language. All right, so Peturbiev was raised in modest conditions and faced a lot of hardships as a young man. His bond with his father was his driving force for a long time, but then he lost his father when he was only a teenager, which further fueled his determination, a determination that we still see today. But for Dmitry Bivol, it was a different struggle. At the age of 11, his family basically uprooted their lives and moved to Russia to further his boxing career. So now this young kid had the pressure of knowing his family's sacrifices were all riding on his success. I cannot tell that they sacrificed only uh, uh, because of me. Yeah? They sacrificed for all of my siblings because they knew that uh, we need good university in the future. If it's not sport, uh, good university or good job. And it's, it will be abroad, not in uh, Kyrgyzstan, because that time the country wasn't uh, giving you good opportunities. You mm -hmm. cannot see the opportunities. Uh, yeah, you went where the opportunities yeah. were. We went to opportunities. My parents moved to opportunities for them, for their kids, most for, for us, to be honest. Uh, and of course, I felt a little bit uh, uh, in a new place, like everybody who's moving somewhere, you cannot find yourself okay. But uh, it took just half a year, maybe, because I was a kid. So in the gyms of Kyrgyzstan and Dagestan, conditions were rough, and these two young fighters, with nothing more than raw determination, were fighting for a way out. For Baturbiev, his Muslim faith is central to his life. His discipline in the ring is mirrored by his devotion outside of it. So it's his faith that keeps him grounded, and it's more than boxing for him. It's a way of life. You know, when you, I'm a Muslim, yes. and I don't know no Muslim people, how they live, I don't know. Uh, first time when I, 
my coach uh, from Canada, Mark Ramsey, says he like he like more m m Muslim people, Muslim boxers, because they have discipline. Yes. They, they don't drink, they don't smoke, they do. They go to sleep early, wake up early because there is prey, you know. When he says that, I, I compare like, oh yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm not uh, thinking about like these things, like uh, I'm not put them together. And then for Bivol, it was that non-traditional multicultural heritage that shaped his identity. Unfortunately, that also made him feel like an outsider for the beginning part of his career. But he took that struggle, and he took that struggle to increase his discipline, and that's what turned him into the fighter that we see today. These personal beliefs and cultural backgrounds give both men a deep reservoir of mental fortitude, something that will be tested in the ring. So Baturbiev makes the move to Montreal, but even that didn't come without its own challenges. He was homesick, there was a huge language barrier, and even the cultural differences didn't agree with him. But luckily for us, he found a lot of support in Montreal's thriving boxing community. They like sport, they like to watch sport, they like to do sport. I am really appreciate they choose me to uh, it's a very smart answer, yeah. by the way. <laughs> right? maybe you do want to piss off half Yeah, it's maybe smart, but it's true. I, I, like from Canada, like it's different uh, place of the world mm -hmm. where I was born. I mean, you know, right. there people uh, like my, my what I do, do. I mean, my job, it's good too. Like. Bebo, meanwhile, was navigating his own challenges on the global stage. As his career took off, he had to adapt to expectations placed on him. So balancing the weight of his past and the pressure of his future, Bivol was evolving into a world champion. When I was going in the ring against guys my age, I was feel myself more confident that he's he's a kid, <laughs> like right. you know, yeah. because I was training with older guys. I was uh, competing sometimes with older guys. I don't know. I I just was enjoying the boxing. Right. Both guys have kind of dedicated their lives to the sport. You know, I'm sure without knowing too much, both upbringings were pretty tough, you know, mm -hmm. and, and humble to say the least. But both guys have made the moves in their career to follow their dreams in boxing. But for all good fighters, the path to success is never smooth. Turbiev has had his share of injuries. He had his rib, his shoulder, and most recently his knee. Plus, financial disputes with his former promoter probably delayed his rise to the top. These all tested his patience, but they never tested his resolve. Yeah, it's injuries. It's, it's, I, I think it's part of uh, sport. Yeah. Injuries always comes with sport, any sport, you know. It, it's happened, uh, and I try to keep this fight, uh, like to do to do this fight, even I have injury, but it's a little bit tough, like, you know, and our team, you know, everyone, doctor and everyone say, like, we need to postpone this fight. Right. But I don't want to do postpone. Came through the pro pros, had a little bit of an injury a couple times here, mm -hmm. got held off, but then all of a sudden Callum Smith happened, and I felt like he turned back the clock. You know, Bebatiev is the more I feel he I feel he has the tools to do it. Bivol's going to have to step up a bit more. So many fighters have had success early against Bebatiev, but no one's been able to keep him off for the duration. And it's going to take a master boxer like Dmitry Bivol to do it. For Bivol, the struggle is different. His style is all about perfection, and he doesn't rely on knockdowns because he's such a technician. So. Every fight for him is a mental battle to remain undefeated because he knows that that one mistake could tarnish his legacy. This is a fight that for me can only be an all-time classic. The guy to my left, our charge, Dimitri Bivol, just an incredible fighter, a master technician. You know, someone that went into the lion's den of the T-Mobile arena on Cinco de Mayo and, I'm sorry, schooled Canelo Alvarez that night and beat him with ease. This time it's a bigger challenge physically. One of the all-time great light heavyweights in Arta better be have a machine. And you have two immovable forces meeting for the undisputed light heavyweight world championship. For 
both fighters, adversity has been a constant companion, but it's also become a source of strength. Viterbiev is a father of four now, so he's fighting for more than just money or for titles. He's fighting for his family, he's fighting for the future of his children, and for the pride of his ancestors. He hasn't shown anything but brilliance, right. right? So he's up very high, and I don't think we've seen the best of Archer now. And the thing I love about him is he's gonna come in for the kill and go for the knockout. I think these guys are tough, focused, that, that mentality, that real stoic, I'm gonna do it, that's yeah. their mentality. So for Bivol, humility probably is his greatest asset, even though he's become an international superstar. And that's because every fight that he takes, he sees it as a chance to pay back that family that's made so many sacrifices for him. And he's proving that success doesn't necessarily change who you are. I wanted to fight against the best uh, boxers in light heavyweight divisions. This is, was to my goals, to make my name in this uh, sport. and. Uh, he has this belt, so Arthur better be, thank you. You know, here, for me, you've got two of the best fighters in the world, two pound for pound greats. I actually think this is the best fight in boxing. And when you take both of those into consideration, they've done everything. Both guys independently have an incredible body of work and their styles just complement each other. It's an intriguing fight. It's a, you know, the, I mean, it is a Game of Thrones, isn't it? You've got yeah. four belts there and somebody Somebody's going to walk away with those belts. Dimitri's ice cold. So's Arta, to be fair. This great event will be shown worldwide on the zone. Alrighty, guys, that's it. We got nothing left to do but fight. I want to stress one last time: this fight is between two very different individuals, different styles, different upbringings, but they're fighting for the exact same thing, and it isn't titles. They're fighting for their legacy. They're fighting for their integrity, their identity, and most importantly, their family.